It's another Saturday afternoon in Victoria, capital of the Seychelles. For many, life in the sunny island state is trouble-free. But that wasn't always the case. Just a few years ago, the government placed some bad bets on bonds. Soon, the former British colony was deeply in debt. In 2008, the country went bankrupt. The International Monetary Fund came to the rescue. With the help of IMF funds, the Seychelles started making a comeback, a success story that began at the harbour. Indian Ocean Tuna is the name of one of the world's largest tuna fishing companies. It's also the biggest employer in the Seychelles. Revenues rose sharply in the years since the country's bankruptcy. That's one reason why the country got back on its feet. We actually representing 95% of the manufacturing export of Seychelles and around 4% to 5% of GDP. It's one of the best fishing grounds in the world. On an average, you have uh, 250,000 tons unloaded or tranship in the Seychelles. At Indian Ocean Tuna, employees work in three shifts covering the entire production chain. They catch the fish, process it and can it. Then it's exported to Europe. Following the IMF's advice, the Seychelles specialized in a few select businesses and focused on their strengths. That strategy helped the country out of the crisis. Besides fishing, tourism is the country's other big source of revenue. Tourist numbers have been growing steadily, up to a quarter million last year. We don't have mass tourism. We don't have um, massive hotels. If you walk around Seychelles, um, you will have a hard time trying to find big buildings, large hotels, taking hundreds and thousands of tourists. Um, we've always kept our numbers down. Tourism on a smaller scale is a lucrative business, as can be seen on the North Island. A short boat ride off the main island of Mahi, there are 11 private villas. Guests include Prince William and his wife Kate, who spent their honeymoon here. It's a thing of beauty. When you, rock, you land in the small little rock in the middle of the ocean, the first thing that strikes you is the crystal blue seas, the white sands. When people come here, the first thing they comment about is the isolation. It's that remoteness that people love to see. That remoteness is also what people pay for, 2,000 euros per night. Unthinkable for the locals, but since they benefit from the steady stream of visitors, many of them are earning more money than they did a few years ago. So these days, Victoria's main market is a busy place, filled with people grateful that tougher times are now behind them.